it's been about three weeks since I've had this boiler going and things have been going pretty well. It's been heating the shop pretty decently. It's not crazy warm in there, but it's still 60, 62. Um, probably need another heat exchanger for that. On top of it actually heating and doing what it needs to, I've been burning way too much wood. I've been having to load the machine three times a day, usually at night before I go to bed, in the morning when I wake up, and then when I get home from work. Uh, it's just too much. Central Boiler says it's supposed to be a 12, every 12 hour burn, and this is loading the machine way up. With that being said, I knew there was something wrong with it. And every single time I've talked to somebody about it, uh, they, they also agree. After looking at it, I noticed I wasn't getting a coal bed. And what was happening is all of my big coals that should be making that coal bed to burn were falling to the bottom and burning up. This gasser has something called a refractory block in it. And it has like a, basically a concrete block with a hole in it and goes down to the bottom. And mine is extremely warped. When I put some bricks on the side of it to make the hole smaller, which I'll show you as I'm cleaning this out, I started developing a coal bed, but I'm still losing quite a bit of coal around the edges of it. So I ordered a new one of those, and that's what we're gonna put in today. In the meantime, we're gonna stir up all of our coals because I want these all to burn out. Oh, there's one of the bricks I was talking about. So in this box is supposed to be my new block. So these are the blocks I'm talking about. And on mine, this right here is all worn heavily. So everything's been kind of falling right around it. Right now, it's still a little chilly out. I'm supposed to get up into the 50s today. I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit. It's warmed up a little bit now. Fire's burnt down. So I'm gonna start by cleaning some ash out so we can get that gasification tube out. Now I have the ash cleaned out, I'm gonna show you where the bricks are, what has to come out. You see these two lines here, those gaps aren't actually supposed to be there. I thought that these were supposed to be actual air inlets when I got it, turns out they're not. Next, if you go over here, you can see how big that hole is where all my coals are just falling right into. So this side's not so bad, this side is huge. This tube right here, Let's try it out. These are the holes that the air blows through down to the reaction chamber. And technically, these box are supposed to come right out. I'm gonna have to mess around with those a little bit, see how they come out here. Got the refractory blocks out. One thing I will say, I've been wearing a respirator, which I typically do, but it was fairly cleaned out, should have, is I should have just driven the 20 minutes of town to get some goggles. Safety glasses weren't gonna cut it. That ash was flying around and it kept getting in my eyes and my eyes are so full of it right now. I definitely, if you're gonna do this, wear goggles, proper safety protection, because that was awful. Well, let me show you what these blocks look like. You see how war this one was and all my coals were just falling right in between there. Compare the sizes between the two. It even looks like they've made this hole smaller. This is a solid two inches, and that's probably only an inch and a half, inch and three quarter. I'm gonna drop that new one in, stick some uh, fire seal around it. Oh, this ash is terrible. And uh, we'll get it back together. Anyways, this escalated quickly. As you can see, I don't have a floor now. I was getting ready to put those bricks in and realized that my floor was loose. And there's a couple spots so I can still see down at the bottom into the reaction chamber. And I was missing some floor seal. So what better time than now to just yank the floor up in the middle of the winter and put So the floor is right over here. There's half the rope seal. The other thing I noticed is these right here are three hooks for this shield right over here. And that shield's supposed to hang. I've never been able to have that shield on there because it's always uh, fell down and I was missing the hook. So I just kept leaning up against the back. I think that could be a problem keeping heat in as well. So I need to take this floor in and weld a new tab on it so I can put the hook on it. Yeah, easy peasy. You gotta keep reminding myself, it was only $200. It's only $200. Got this inside to look at. And as you can see right here, it's missing the hook compared to that one. Now, even that hook doesn't look very good. I think I can still get by with it. The problem with this one right here is because of the reaction chamber temperatures and how hot this machine's been before, it's really thinned that out. So take a look at this taper. 
you can see how it's thicker right at the bottom than what it is at the top. Not a lot of material for me to work with right there. So I'm just going to cut a new piece of flat stock and just make a new hook. Simple enough, right? Now I just gotta clean this up so I can uh, weld to it. I'm gonna draw on this to kind of make where I want to have my hook. We can see where it's at here and I just kind of got to eyeball that. We're gonna drill a hole here and then we're just gonna cut it down to that, come back and weld it on. So we have our hook made. As long as this fits, we should be good. Although not pretty, everything's gonna do what it needs to do. I might tap that in a little bit to make it easier to put that shield in. Now we just need to take the wire brush on the grinder, clean up the edges, and go put this floor back in. Like so. As you can see along all these edges, I have my rope still tucked in. Where the square tube is for the gasification part of it was really tough to get to because it actually had to go around, down, and around the square. I mean, I did the best I could. That, that square tube's still gonna fit in there. So now we just need to put in that flap for that covers the heat exchanger in the bottom and then put our brick back in and then more rope. When I know some of the seal was gone, I was just going to put the block in and deal with it in the spring. But I'm here, I've already knocked all the ash out of it. The floor came loose when I was pounding the blocks out. So at this point, it just makes sense to go all out and fix it. Got the heat shield in. Much easier to put it in from up here than it is down there. But obviously the hangers are doing everything they need to. Perfect. Now let's grab these blocks. one can't quite do this with the camera in my hand so i'm gonna pause it for a second get them set in there got both of them in there i'm gonna tuck this rope around the edges to finish it off and now i have the rope around the blocks now some people's machines i see have like angle along the sides if this if this edge 550 is supposed to have it and you know the machine please comment below i have never seen it on this one maybe it's something i'm missing I don't actually have the parts diagram. I have a pretty central boiler dealer. He's about two and a half hours away from me. Nelson Lawn cares who it is. And I really appreciate all the help that they've given me. He's been able to get all the parts I've needed and usually within a few days. But now I have this, the door in, the refractory blocks replaced. It's time to build a coal bed and get this thing going again. It's hard to fire it up right now because it's nice out. It's like 56 or almost 60 degrees right now. But the water in the boiler here is still about 140, 150 degrees. I can, it's hot in there. So rather than let that water cool down, I'm just gonna go ahead and get the fire going. And then I'll be able to see if I burn less wood. Keep in mind, it didn't matter if it was 45 degrees or 60 degrees, I was still burning a minimum of two full loads top to bottom a day. And when it was 15 degrees out, I was burning three loads top to bottom a day. So we'll see with the new blocks and with all this rope replaced, hopefully I burn a heck of a lot less. I almost forgot to put this in. So now that the square tube is set back in there, let's take a look at how much room is around the edges. You can hardly see down to the bottom right now. Before I replace these, I tried dumping some charcoal briquettes in there to get a coal bed going. And when I poured them in, they went straight to the reaction chamber. So let's see where we're at. Can't even get it to fall through. That's a big improvement. Guess I better get this thing going. <laughs> we didn't wash my face because that looked terrible. Water cooled down to about 128 degrees. I thought it was still about 140, but it was 128. Obviously, I'm really going to develop a good cold bed to see how long my burns are going to be. I'm really hoping this fixes my problem. I'll do a follow-up video in about a week because 
we have a couple of days of really warm temps and it's not going to cool down for about another three or four days so i should have a pretty good clue in a week or week and a half and then i'll do a follow-up video of how long my burns are lasting hopefully it's a lot less wood than it has been uh, i did my best if you guys are familiar with these machines feel free to comment uh i'm always up for learning I picked this thing up mainly because I wanted to be able to heat that thing over there a lot cheaper. Well, that's all for today's project. This only took me a few hours to do in general. Uh, I did have a little bit more running into town and all of that stuff, but that's just part of it. I've really enjoyed working on this old boiler and I hope that you guys have enjoyed watching me work on it as well. If you've liked this video of me fixing this boiler, I'm always fixing things up and tinkering in the shop and doing oddball projects. So please like and subscribe and follow the channel and we'll see what I come up with next time.